he seemed to think I'm going to duck first and then I'm going to throw a punch. <laughs> you got to throw a punch and then give him duck. Up, give him up. Fighting out of what amounts to a crouch. Gives Danny a chance to punch down at him and Romero has enjoyed throwing the right hand over the top to take advantage of this angle. Bungo throws good combinations, but he just doesn't seem to throw them with the intent of doing harm. You gotta mean it. Romero committing to the body shots, as you can see. Committing to the power also. He's trying to, he's trying to hurt someone. Good idea. And Bungo should do the same thing. Throw the shot. Hey, I want to take you out with this. Good combination by Romero. He stood right in the... Found the target with the left hook. Stayed right on his pivot. And he can see Bunga reaching and hitting the air as Romero backs up at just the right moment. So Danny Romero who had such a good rhythm in the first three rounds. Seems to have found it again now in rounds seven and eight. You see, you gotta have a swift corner man to tell the referee to keep his hand off your so far, ignoring referee Rudy Battle, keeping his attention focused on Biani Bungu. Yeah, that's Bungu up to your corner. Your corner's supposed to do this. Bungu lands the left and the right inside, but his punches don't have the same snap, the same heavy power that Danny Romero has been able to bring to his. Bungu is trying to load up every now and then, but not with the intent. Johnny Tapia, it seems, is a much more difficult opponent for Romero because of his quicker movement in and out and quicker hands. Protestant, born in Belfast, now lives in Las Vegas, won a silver medal fighting for the nation of Ireland, or Northern Ireland, I should say, at the 1992 Olympic Games. And there is his wife, Cheryl, who is also his manager, and their daughter, born seven months ago, March of this year. Both McCullough and his opponent tonight, Prince Nassim Ahmed, have become fathers this year. The daughter stands up well. Okay. 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 That's a much better round. Let's go. Let's go. Round nine. Round nine of a schedule 12. World Junior Featherweight Championship fight. Title is Biani Bungu in the blue trunks against challenger Danny Romero in the gold. Romero's colors of gold and red from the state flag of his beloved New Mexico. Bungu is starting to get aggressive now, so that means Romero can land some better shots. Suddenly Bungu, Bungu comes out in the ninth, firing from all angles. Bungu is desperate. And Romero gets a look. And look for opportunities to measure the man. Danny still concentrating on the body where plausible to do so. Has landed a lot of solid rights and left to the body. Let him go. You're holding and hitting. Step back. Step back. In your day, George, did. Did referees comment as much about what was going this on? Ref this referee is doing a terrible job of agitating Romero. He's doing a terrible job. He reaches out with his hand. He tells him, don't hold. Whenever he's, I don't know why, but this is a terrible Watch job. Watch the head. Now he can't even bob and weave. Well, I think he's giving fair warning to both fighters because they're both coming in to watch their heads. You see how long his hand is on Romero's chest? Stays there for a while. Yeah, well, you watch these things. I've been there, done that. 
Referee Rudy Battle, third man in the ring. And the noise you hear from the crowd, that's the Prince Nassim Hamed cheering section. They're just making noise to get themselves ready for what comes next. Mongoose should be getting aggressive. He's waiting around. He's going to lose his title. And you saw Danny Romero chase Bungu into the ropes and then unload the right hand. Nice and clean. No hold. No hold. Get off. Get off. Get off. No hold. No hold. Good uppercut by Bungu. Romero landed a left hook. Larry Merchant mentioned in the last round, Romero had a lot more difficulty or seemed to have more difficulty fighting against Johnny Tapia. Tapia, in a more upright stance, was able to see Danny better and moved quicker to angles at which Danny couldn't effectively attack him. Bungu tends to stay right in front of Romero, which is a big help to Danny. But Bungu lands a hard punch there, and he wouldn't land those kinds of hard shots if he weren't standing in there to do it. the pace for the round with that sharp heavy right hand looks like he won that round he's trying to time you on he is yeah. come on he's coming on goes past the ninth round for the sixth time in his career. Liani Bungu goes past the ninth round for the 19th time in his career. Bungu having won 17 of the 18 times he's gone this far. Romero four for five. In round nine, Danny Romero's punch output drops to 62 punches. He's been throwing more than 80 per round. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Jim, six rounds to three, 87, 84, Danny Romero. Jim, it's just a matter of what you like, power or speed. And so far, I like Danny Romero's power. Just as you called it, Rianni Bungo, right in front of Danny Romero all night, fighting Danny Romero's fight, not giving him any angles. When Danny Romero opens up, he wins every round. I must say, I, I'm a little surprised that how solid and strong Romero looks at this weight, having fought most of his fights at 115 and even at 112 pounds. Stop punching. Stop punching. Step back. Stop. Makes you wonder. Stop punching. Step back. Stop. Makes you wonder if Romero didn't do himself a disservice, lingering as long as he did at the lower weight class to finally get the meeting against his hometown rival Johnny Tapia, also of Albuquerque. So many people in Albuquerque and indeed the whole state of New Mexico wanted the fight to take place. Maybe it was a little bit unnatural for Romero to be trying to fight him at that weight at that time in his career. Bungu should gamble just a little bit now. Just wait in there for a round or two for him. Try to hurt Romero. I think it's time to point out that of the three officials, one is from the three judges, one is from South Africa, one I believe is from Albuquerque, and one is from New Jersey. The New Jersey judge may decide who wins this fight. You think he's the swing vote? Yep. No, hold on, no, hold on. All right, Frank, let him go. Stop punching him. Stop punching him. Bungu has to take chances, George. Yeah, he's got to gamble a little bit. You just can't let a guy come in and just steal your title like that. And how difficult is it for a guy who has succeeded through 11 consecutive title oh, defenses oh. to be convinced that he's in trouble at this stage? Yeah, it's going to be rough. Well, well, not only that, but, can, hold up. but when those defenses, defensively. Mm -hmm. Get off me. Bungu 
doing nothing in particular to increase the rhythm in round number 10. After he had a good round in the ninth, he seems to have receded just a little bit in the 10th. And Danny Romero with the luxury once again of being selective in this round. Step back. Step back. rounds in the books. Turn to HBO on November 17 for the next edition of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories to be featured, a look back at the 1958 NFL Championship game between the Colts and the Giants and its sudden death impact on professional football. A candid interview with John Daly and the story of obsession, perseverance, pain, and victory about the athletes who compete in 100-mile ultramarathon foot races. Real sports where nothing is out of bounds. How you feel? Take a Good. deep breath. Okay. Deep breath. I'm trying to block everything. I know. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to block everything, but Danny, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you're throwing those combinations at him, huh? Okay. You don't limit okay. yourself to one shot. You're not gonna knock him out. Let's go, big up. How do you feel? Let's go. Let's go, big up. Let's go. Romero looks pretty fresh after 10 rounds to me, George. Round 11, nice and clean. He's nice respected the uh, Watch your head Bungu. in there, watch your head. Watch your head. He stayed back and conservative, kept some respect. Maybe he was convinced that he can't knock him out. Quick little right inside for Bungu. In the last round, Bungu's punch out would drop to 68. Romero through 91 as he steps up the energy level. It's been a seesaw battle in terms of punch stat numbers and the energy oh, no. output of each fighter from break, round break, to round. Break, break, break. Early rounds go long to Romero. The rough retail Romero don't hold, so he steps back and the guy hits him. You really have it in for this referee. Oh, I have it in like for any referee that's above boxing. You've got to be able to go tip five, ten rounds, see how hard it is, and then have someone coaching on the side telling you what you can do before you do right. it. That, that's, that's a legitimate inside-the-ring point of view. You've been there, and there's no way you can train for some foolishness like that. I said nice and clean. I said nice and clean. What would he tell Joe Frazier? No, who cares what he thinks if it's nice and clean? Can you imagine someone telling that Philadelphia fighter, watch your head for 10 rounds? <laughs> <laughs> All right, break. Let me go. Stop punching in there. Step back. Step back. Step back. Nice and clean. What you say is, what if you want to be rough? This is a rough sport. This is a rough sport. This isn't anything that you can just say, step back and nice and clean. Yeah. Quarterback, go out for the touchdown. <laughs> Now, when Bangu throws a shot, he doesn't tell him to be nice and clean. <laughs> Round 11 of what has become a tactical boxing match between Guyani Bungu and Danny Romero. Now, Romero is starting to sit there a little, standing in one spot, catching a few shots in the nice and clean that means you're trying to tell a guy which kind of fight he can fight in this room doesn't benefit Romero to be Danny Romero staying right with the champion sharp right hand by Romero Bungu left himself open for it and Romero Punctuates round 11 with a couple of combinations, not much landed, but again, the difference in energy level, visible there. Last round, last round. Give me the give me the give me the car. Finish with that, finish with that hook, huh? Keep him straight down the middle. That jab is boom, 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 boom. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. He's gonna come out hard, Danny. He's gonna come out hard. Okay. 
him and pen and give him an uppercut at right hook every time. What do you say? I'm sorry. Give him an uppercut. What do you say? All the time. Okay, give him one that. What the? Mine's been working. Come on. Mine. You're going to come out hard, huh? Don't come out. Nothing lazy. Nothing lazy. Because we need this one. Yanni Bungu's last 13 fights have, nice have gone round. into the 12th nice round. 11 of the preceding 12 having gone the entire 12 round distance. And no indication this one is going to do anything but finish out and go to the scorecard. Bungu has been there before, so he realizes that this round could be very important. Romero better not try to coast. Bungu begins the 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds of round 12 with another of his energy first. Firing three and four punch combinations and taking the initiative away from Danny as the last round begins. Right hand lands flush for Bungu. Misses with that one. Romero on the defensive now. Aggressive enough, he can steal a few rounds from you. Like, yeah, well, he only has, he doesn't have a few rounds. George, he's got this round. No, I don't care how far you uh, you think you are ahead. It's always a good idea yep, to come out and strong. win the last round. Uh -huh. And right now, it is Bunker who's doing it, and Danny is not. That's Absolutely, true. and he's the champion, and he might have gotten the benefit of the doubt in some of those early close rounds that we gave to Romero. belong to Biani Bungu. And indeed, if the scoring is close, not out of the question at all, oh, it's that will turn out to be a big factor. Oh, well, you've got a champion who's going a distance a few times, pull out these victories, so the judges no, judge him right. according to what he's go done. He has they're, done. They're nodding. The judges at this moment are nodding and saying, yep, the champion knows what to do. Yeah. We got to take a title from the champion. No. You can't sit there. Good right hand by Romero in that exchange. Danny Romero's trainer, I'd be screaming at him to throw combinations right now. Well, as soon as he steps by, what the referee tells him to keep it close. <laughs> well, this is 12 hard rounds, and you can't do everything you want to do. Very intense, not high in drama, except to all of the people directly and emotionally involved. The bump was a very solid fighter. No matter what you do to him, he comes right back, he gets in position and try to get you and pay you back for it. Well, life has landed harder punches on Bungu than any fighter ever will. So to him, it's just a matter of sticking with his daily work. This is all he does. He boxes, he stays in the gym. He's held his title for a long time, and he came here planning to keep it. Danny Romero had other ideas. We'll find out in a moment how the judges thought. I thought Romero won the fight, but there is room for disagreement. I thought Romero won the fight, but I'd be disappointed if I were in his corner that he didn't close the deal. Yeah, he was, he was fighting for a title, and he coasted a few rounds when he should have been aggressive to try to hold something back as though he had tomorrow. Harold Letterman, what's your final scorecard look like? I also agree. I thought Danny Romero won the fight. 115, 113, seven rounds to five, Danny Romero. But Yanni Bunga won those last two rounds, Jim, because he was in better condition. He just kept throwing punches, backing Danny up. Danny looked like a guy that was out of gas after the ninth. So certainly Bunga did win 11 and 12, but he ran out of rounds, couldn't keep up, uh, couldn't catch up, rather. So Romero still had seven rounds in the back. Romero should get this decision. Incidentally, you can't tell a referee to shut up. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no rules against noisy referees, so Romero was stuck with him. That's it. There should be a rule against coaching referees. Bye, boy. When you rule the week. world, George, <laughs> and one day you will. Uh, I'd have that Rudy battle in my house, that referee, he wouldn't be allowed to have cheese on his burger. Just the burger, though. <laughs> you wouldn't make him eat a veggie burger? 
Oh, oh no, he has, he's not that cool. <laughs> I'd be surprised if we didn't have a split decision. Yeah, it would go to the champion then, wouldn't you think? No idea, George. Whatever happens, Danny Romero gave everything he had and gave a good account of himself. Michael Buffer's got the numbers. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Valley Park Place, Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. John Riley scores the bout. 114 to 114, he has it even. Lulani Mataya scores about 117 to 112. James Ash scores it 115 to 114 for the winner by majority decision. And still, IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, the Carousel Kid. Dejected Danny Romero walks around the ring, wonders what he, what more he could have done. Some of us are wondering the same thing. And we'll take a look at the final punch stat numbers, and you can see that by CompuBox numbers, Romero landed more punches, Bungu threw more, Romero landing at a higher statistical rate. One scorecard was even, one scorecard had a one-point margin.